Well, good morning, what a lovely start this morning. The sun is out and I've got the adjustable zig rigs out. So I'm gonna talk you through today a few of my tips for zig fishing, how to get the most out of the zig rigs. And I've got a few little clever tips to make zig fishing a lot easier and get a bend in your rod a little bit more often. So I'm gonna play this fish, get this fish in, and we'll talk you through how to zig fish. Well, that didn't take too long. The rods have been out about half an hour this morning. There's a few fish rising in the swim and I've got zigs just underneath them and this little common's come along. But I'm gonna slip this little fella back. Before I cast the zig rig out, I'm gonna talk you through the adjustable zig and how to cast it without it tangling. So let me quickly talk you through the adjustable zig kit. I've got one of the corder kits here. There are lots of kits on the market, but I like the corder one. It's nice and simple and it just does the job for me. I have tweaked it slightly. The little ledger stem that you get in the pack, I changed that for a corder marker stem because I prefer that ceramic ring rather than the metal ring you get as standard. So that sits on your main line, exactly the same as a marker float setup. runs on your main line with an inline float above it. And your main line goes through the float attached to a quick change swivel, and then onto that swivel, I attach my hook link. The hook link, now I make that hook link the exact length between the butt ring on my carp rod and the reel, and that'll become apparent why when I cast the rod out in a minute. And the hook link itself, I've got either a 10 or a 12 pound line. This is 12 pounds, some tracker zig line. I've gone for 12 because it was quite thin. I think it was about 0.26 in diameter, which is incredibly thin for that breaking strain. And I've got a size eight mixer hook. Then I just caught that little common on a bit of black and red foam with a little thinking anglers at zigger on there. It's like a little liner liner on the eye of the hook. But there are lots of different choices when it comes to zig baits. And I'll talk about the bait a little bit later on. Now, if you try and cast an adjustable zig out without doing this next little tip, I promise you it will tangle. And I know I used to lick and stick a PVA nugget onto the side of the float and then hook the hook into that nugget. But I found it a little bit 50-50 to whether that nugget would stay on, especially if I'm fishing any range. So the better way to do it is get some PVA tape and tie a piece of PVA tape around the side of the float. Let me just, obviously make sure your float is dry before you put this on there. You've only got to tie it on with a couple of overhand knots. And then once you've tied that tape on, you can just hook your hook behind the tape. Let's just trim that up. Now take your hook bait. It's a little bit fiddly, but just get your hook point behind the tape, hook that on the tape, and that'll withstand quite a strong cast. In fact, I've never had it come off as yet, but once it hits the water, sinks to the bottom, the tape will melt, releasing your hook bait, so it's all out there, tangle free. I have wrapped this rod out on the marker sticks because I've got a spod rod marked out at the same distance because I am going to put a bit of bait over the top of the zigs. But for now, let's get this rod out and then I'll talk you through how to set the zig and how to set it at what depth you want to fish it at. Once you've cast the rod out and you've let it hit the bottom, keep a nice tight line, pop it on the rod rest, and then just give it a minute or two just to ensure that PVA tape has melted. And once you're confident the tape's melted, you quite simply just keep paying line off the reel. I've loosened the clutch on the reel. Every time you pull a foot of line off the reel, that float will rise a foot and just keep doing it until you see the float appear on the surface. If you are fishing really long range, it might be worth bringing some binoculars just to make seeing that float a little bit easier. I'm not fishing too far here. I think I'm about 50 yards. There we go. So the float has just appeared on the top. Now, the reason I made that hook link the same length as from the first ring on the rod to the reel is I know if I now pull that length of line back on the reel, the hook bait will be sitting just on the top. So I just pinch the line near the first ring of the rod and start winding it back on the reel, pulling the float back down as I go. And once I get that to there, I now know that that hook bait 
that's just hovering on the surface or just under the surface and I can then choose how far under the surface I want the float. So another advantage to the adjustable zigs, if you want to explore the different depths on a fixed zig, you have to keep reeling the rod in, changing the length of the hook link and recasting it. Now you may notice on these rods, up from the reel, I've put a little bit of camo tape a foot from the reel and that's just me being a little bit OCD. So I can know if I pinch the line near that tape and then wind that back down, I know that I've pulled that bait a foot under the surface. And I'm going to fish this one quite near the surface because the sun's out today and there's a few carp feeding on the top. So that's probably about two foot from the surface. Pop the bobbin on, a nice tight line. I'm popping it in the line clip as well. And as simple as that. I've now set a bait about 18 inches to two foot beneath the surface. I'm going to pick the spod rod up and I'm going to put a bit of bait over the top. Well, the venue I'm at today has got quite a good head of carp in it and a few bites could be on the cards. So I'm gonna spod over the top of the zig. So I've got some floaters here with a little bit of cap oil on them. And as I mentioned, the spod rod has marked out the same distance of the zigs. The zigs are probably 18 inches to two foot beneath the surface. And by getting the carp in a bit of a frenzy on the surface, I'm confident they'll dip down and pick those zigs up just beneath them. So I'm gonna drop a couple of spawns out, see if we can get these carp feeding, see if we can get another bite. So the other option when it comes to spodding over the top of the zigs is you can mix up a spotty ground bait mix with all sorts of different little particles in it that fall through the water column. But as it's a nice sunny day, I think the carp are going to be more interested in the surface with those zigs just underneath the surface. So one of the advantages to using the adjustable zigs over a fixed rig is you don't have that great big long hook link. So when you're planning and netting a fish, it makes life a lot easier. So my hook link is about three foot long on here, which means when I want to net the fish, I haven't got a eight, nine, 10 foot hook link with a lead above it. it just makes life a lot easier. Well, that one was on a little tiny krill pop-up, which is a similar colour to those dog biscuits that I'm feeding, because they really seem switched into the dog biscuits. So matching those dog biscuits colour-wise made sense. And I set it really close to the surface. It was only inches away from the surface. But I'll pop this fella back, and then I'm going to talk about the other choices for hook baits, because I've actually caught the fish today on foam. I've caught them on different colour pop-ups. But we'll go through that in a little bit more depth once I've slipped this fish back. So when it comes to hook bait choice when you're zig fishing, you've got two different baits to choose from. You've got little pop-up boilies and bits of zig foam. And I've caught on both of them today, but I'm probably swaying a little bit more towards pop-ups, especially on this venue, because the water's quite coloured and they have the smell as well as that visual attraction as well. And when it comes to the pop-ups, these little sticky baits krill pop-ups have been really good on this venue. We're feeding the krill floaters, so these smell like the krill floaters. They're a similar colour to the krill floaters. And I think once you get them feeding on the top, put one of these within a foot of the surface, it definitely works. And then the other pop-ups I use are the little brightly coloured ones. I've done well on the yellows and the pinks, especially in clearer water. I think when the carp aren't overly feeding on those hot days and they're cruising around mid-water, a bright coloured bait in their eye line, they can't resist it. And out of curiosity more than hungry, they grab hold of it. Then when it comes to foam, foam is a brilliant zig bait. I've started using it a bit more in recent seasons. It's super buoyant. I like to soak it in a flavouring just to give it a bit more of a boost, maybe for my confidence more than anything. That's in a little bit of beetlein, a really sweet liquid. We've had a couple of fish this morning on those little black and red ones from Thinking Anglers. So that really is the two baits to choose from, little pop-up boilies or pieces of foam.
Well, there's a much better fish to end on. And hopefully this video has gave you a few tips to improve your zig fishing and to inspire you to get out there and try zigs. It really is a deadly method on the right day. And if there's any questions you've got about zig fishing, don't forget to leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. And lastly, I've put links in the description to all the products that I've used. Failing that, you can go on the MyAD app, look on our website, or pop into your local angling direct.